Alright, uh, this is a product review uh, sent into the channel by Infrared. Um, this is the P2 Pro um, IR camera, okay? Um, now, Infrared, um, sometimes they have a brand name called X Infrared, and they have a company name. I don't remember the company name, but they're located on the coast of China between um, Shanghai and Beijing, uh, sort of along there, sort of uh, kind of across the bay from, uh, from North Korea. But they um, uh, are not just a kind of a random Chinese company that went ahead and built a, a, um, an infrared camera. They actually build their own sensors. So they build their own uh, uh, microbolometers and stuff. Maybe I'll do a video on microbolometers and, and uh, how the technology of this thing actually works. But uh, it is a tiny camera. They claim it's the smallest one. Um, and it is very nice. Uh, I really do like this product a lot. Now, they have two different versions. They have one with the lightning connector for iPhones, and uh, they have a uh, version with USB-C uh, for Android, okay? It's not plastic, it's, it's uh, aluminum, so it's very rugged, it's very nice. It has a little step here, which I find very useful. Uh, it actually uh, fits onto my iPhone with a case on. My, uh, had, I had a different one from a different company and you had to use an extension. It was very cumbersome. This one plugs right on for me. So it is, it is very, very nice. Now, they do have one extra feature and that is this. It's a magnetic cover, okay? And it's not just a cover, it's actually another lens. It's a, ma a macro lens, so we'll talk about that later. But, but this, is the actual, this is the actual camera. Um, so yeah, it's very, very small. Let me find a ruler here. Uh, it is about 30 millimeters by 20 millimeters by 10 millimeters. So 10, 20, 30. Um, and uh, this is the big lens on the front. Now, when you're looking at IR signals, you can't just use glass. Glass is not transparent at uh, infrared wavelengths. This is probably sensed to just somewhere between eight and 12 microns, something like that of wavelength. And so the, the lenses that are used, let me take the lens cap off of this macro lens here. Uh, the lenses are actually made out of germanium. Uh, germanium is very transparent at those wavelengths and so uh, you need to use the right the right material, so we'll set that aside for now. But yeah, this is the uh, this is the actual camera. Um, so let's uh, see how it works. All right. So if you go to the app store, uh, you'll, the instructions tell you to look for a particular app, and it's not labeled correctly in the instructions. So if you get one of these, go look for Thermal P2. Thermal P2 is the uh, program program that you're looking for. Okay. And so I am going to. Uh, plug the camera in and you can see that standoff works really well for my case. It fits right in there. And then I'm going to launch, uh, launch their program here, which looks for that camera and calibrates it. And there we go. So now we have a, uh, now we have a live image. So let me, uh, let me, let me rearrange the camera a bit here. All right. So, uh, the pixel resolution, of this is uh, 256 by 192, so pretty good resolution for for a uh, uh, thermal a thermal camera. And uh, one of the nice things, it's also uh, 20. I think it's it's either 24 or 25 frames per second, so you can take video, um, which is which is super super nice. All right, um, so. If we go to palette, of course, we can set uh, white hot. We can set we can set black hot. We can set uh, uh, you know different kind of color. Oops, Oop, I didn't want to click that one. I want to click down here. So here's the classic uh, fake color ones. So red is hot, blue is cold. Um, yeah, it's really really nice. Uh, so before we uh, start pushing buttons and stuff, let's let's look at some images. Okay, I have something here just to turn on. Uh, we can sort of take a look at it uh, without any power applied to the circuit yet. And we can turn on, if you click in the middle here, uh, you can turn on temperature display, all right? And now it's gonna find the, uh, the hottest and the coldest, and it's gonna mark those, and it's, gonna, uh, it's going to tell you uh, what those temperatures are, so 
Uh, the colds are around 15 C and the hots are around 22 C. The hots are basically reflections off the metal up to the, uh, to the lighting. So they're not true temperatures. Um, but yeah, let's, let's put, uh, let's put five volts on this thing and see if we can see it, uh, see if we can actually see it heat up. All right. So now we, uh, now we're looking at things and I think we can see right over on the right hand edge there. We have an IC that's turning on 26 C. Now the uh, focus range of this thing is probably about, I don't know. What is that? I'm not good in that. It's about six inches, something like that. Um, to the object. So, you know, around maybe up to maybe a hundred millimeters, something, something like, something like that. And you can see the S 28 C now. So there's a, there's an IC getting hot there. Okay. So the really, really cool thing is, uh, with the purchase, um, this is about a $300 camera. Um, with the purchase is this, uh, thing that looks sort of looks like a lens cover, but it's actually a macro lens. Okay. So if I stick that on there and it's just magnetic, it's just, just holds on there. So now we can come down and you can see that uh, now we're able to see really, really closely, closely to that uh, part there. And we're down around maybe 30 millimeters now, something like that. And we can see that that, that particular chip is warming up. Yeah. Look at that. So really, really good resolution that you see in individual pins on the, uh, on the uh, chip there. Let's look around. There's the, uh, the oscillator, the oscillator is running around 25 C. Yeah. I really, really like this macro lens. So, um, I'm shocked that they actually include that with the actual product and not as a, uh, like an add on, like if you pay an extra money and you get the little, the little thing but that this makes it really, really useful for me. Now for a lot of people, they're not going to ever use this macro lens, but for, I think for the, for people like us who are troubleshooting in the lab bench, it's, it's nice to really zoom in and try to figure out exactly which trace is getting hot, which, which I see is getting hot, maybe which pin of the IC is getting hot. Yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be super, super useful. All right. So I'll take a picture here. Take a picture of that. Um, yeah, very, very nice. I do like it a lot. Around here, and yeah, you can see the uh, you can see this. Um, can you see that? Maybe you can't see that. There's a uh, an oscillator here. Uh, this package right here is an oscillator. Now, if I have like a grazing angle on it, it's getting it's showing cold, and if I get a reflection on it, it's showing hot. So, I think uh, hot is probably correct. So with these, uh, IR cameras, you have to be careful about the emissivity of the materials and it's all calibratable and stuff, but you have to know what you're doing. Um, to not get confused, whether you're looking at a reflection or whether you're looking at the actual, uh, heat of the part. Now it stutters every once in a while. And when it's stuttering, it's actually recalibrating these, uh, these sensors need to be recalibrated because you can imagine they're trying to detect heat and oh, by the way, they get hot, they get hot themselves. And so they're constantly calibrating every once in a while to make sure you're getting a very, very good image. And there are menu systems and stuff in here to help you, uh, maybe even make it better than, than what it's doing straight out of the box. I haven't really, I haven't really played with that yet. Um, all right. So <clears throat> let's push some buttons. All right. So, uh, there is a button at the top, uh, professional thermometer. Yeah. You can turn us particular modes on if you want it to measure more accurately. I haven't pl played with that yet. Image settings, uh, automatic shutter switch, continuous image capture. So if that I told you that thing stutters once in a while and it recalculates. You can tell it now just stay on all the time. Um, measurement settings, uh, you can set what kind of, uh, whether you want to have centigrade or Fahrenheit, um, you can have a set an alarm if something gets too hot. There's burn protection so that if it sees something too hot and that might damage the camera, it shuts itself off. Um, okay. So that's the top there. 
Uh, you can do picture in picture, so you can turn the um, the, the actual camera in the iPhone on at the same time you're showing that. But, you know, one's up at the top, one's down at the bottom, so I haven't really found that very useful. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm not sure what this does. I think this might be a recalibrate. Yeah, I think I think that says go ahead and recalibrate automatically, you know, right away. I uh, showed you these. Uh, you can flip the image. You can change the corrections for emissivity and what temperatures and distance and stuff. Yeah, so that's all in there. That's very nice. Um, measurement mode, uh, high quality, wide range, automatic switching, fine. And, oops. <clears throat> and then image settings, brightness and contrast for the actual thing. Okay, fine. All right. Uh, there's, you can have photo mode or you can click here, uh, you can go video mode so you can take videos with it. I'll show you some videos later, um, keep it on photo mode and there's the palette of all the different types of, uh, all the different types of colors that you can, uh, that you can add to your, uh, apply to your picture. Um, then there's gallery. So you can look at pictures that you've taken already. Um, yeah, here's a picture of Imsai Dog. You can see his cold nose and his and his hot face. All right. So I think one of the coolest things is the video mode. <laughs> I've never had uh, an IR camera that could do video. So I was taking a video of Imsai Dog, and I noticed as he walked across the carpet, he left hot footprints behind. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> so I can follow I can follow Imsai Dog by his feet by his footprints. It's very neat. Um, All right, um, so I highly recommend this camera. It is super nice. I know I'm going to get a whole bunch of use out of it, um, especially with the uh, macro lens. I do enjoy that. It's very, very small. It's very, very rugged. Uh, I've read some other reviews on this, and I think I have the exact same complaint. There's really no good um, carrying case for this thing. They, they should have a little plastic carrying case for this. It comes with a little cloth bag to drop it into, but it just didn't seem, it didn't seem right. Um, I'm just going to keep it with the uh, macro lens attached and just call that pretty pretty rugged. But um, I'm probably going to design a 3D print a little case for this thing to, 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 to put it in. All right. Like I said, the company builds all kinds of stuff. You might go to their website. They have uh, consumer-grade stuff, which is what this is. They have military-type grade stuff. Um, they have a whole bunch of stuff. They have things for um, putting IRs. Uh, scopes on rifles and things uh yeah they have uh they have quite a bit of things let's see here touch the temperature of the world there we go um anyway that's my review of the infrared p2 pro available in uh for the uh, iphone or for the android